Next, anyone for or against the request will be asked to come forward to the microphone and express their opinion. Each side will have a total of 10 minutes to speak. Platts, rezonings, revised master plans, street renamings, and text amendments require a public hearing. And once the public hearing is completed, Planning Commission members will deliberate and render their decision. Planning Commission members will, with a personal or financial interest in any petitioner's request are required to recuse themselves. The members of the Planning Commission are yours truly Ann Clemens, Chairman, Mr. Reg Mantooth, uh, Vice Chairman, Mr. Frank Cook, Mr. Buddy Hardwick, Mr. Cruz Reeves, Mr. Reginald Hawkins, Mr. Reggie Dunn, Mr. James Reed, and Mr. Kippy Tate. The members of the Planning Control staff are Mr. James Center and Ms. Javon Hines, Recording Secretary. Members and petitioners are requested to please speak directly into the microphone. The minutes are recorded for legal purposes and this is the only way to accurately pick up the audio. Tonight, as I said, we have nine members present and it takes five votes to pass a petition. I don't have to say that the number of members present, if you would look, like to delay your request, unless you just change your mind about it, we have all of the members present. Planning, uh, are there any changes? Yes, ma'am. Uh, item number two has been withdrawn. All right. Thank you. Uh, we will, uh, I assume the members of the Planning Commission received the minutes and you've reviewed the minutes? Uh, Madam Chairman. Yes. I do have a correction to right, the sir. minutes. I think somewhere in there said I nominated Tommy Tyson. All right. And I couldn't have nominated and mm -hmm. voted against him at the same time. So I, something is wrong with that. All right, uh, Ms. J uh, Javon, would you please note the correction? I don't know who I don't know who nominated him, but I didn't. All right. We'll fix it. All right. Correction so noted. Any other corrections? Motion to approve. Move to approve. I second. Move and properly second the minutes with standing with the correction have been approved. First item. Oh, all those in favor of the <laughs> minutes being approved? All right. All the, any opposed? None. Motion carries. Need to approve with the amendments, Madam Chairman, if you yes. don't mind. Yes, I said yes. that. Yes. Okay. Mr. Center? Ma'am. The first item, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said you were going to read. No, I'm just reading the introduction. I got you. Okay. <laughs> All right. The first item is Flowers and White Engineering, representing Lane Jones, LLC. Requesting final approval of Lane's Landing overall, located on the east side of Taylor Road, approximately 1,500 no feet north of Core Highway in an R50 single family residential zoning district. Thanks, James. Um, good evening. I'm Kenneth White with Flowers and White, representing Lane Jones LLC. The property you see there is a track of land that we, um, we rezoned a couple of months ago, it's R50. <coughs> And uh, this is the uh, preliminary plat overall for that property, um, showing kind of three different size lots, 50s, 55, and 60 foot width. Um, I'd be entertaining any questions, should you have any? Questions from the Planning Commission? Comments? Does that 1,500 feet uh, north of Troy Highway, is that the, uh, the size of the area? Or is that 1,500 <laughs> feet off? That's off. lineal foot, isn't it? The, the property is 1,500 foot lineal foot north of? Okay. Yeah. I think it's 1,500 foot along Taylor Road from okay. Troy House. Any other remarks or comments from the commission? <clears throat> Questions or comments from the audience? Is there a motion to approve? Or disapprove. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Motion approved. All in favor. All in favor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any opposed? 
Motion passes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next item. As we said earlier, the second item has been withdrawn. It was by Goodwin Mills and K. Wood for Alpha Properties, Inc. and Charles and Inez Everidge. So we'll go to the third item. Mm -hmm. Third item is for Stephanie Reynolds, representing Fire Station Number 2, Montgomery LLC. It's a request to be zoned one lot located at 400 Montgomery, pardon me, Mobile Street from T40, General Urban Open. T5 Urban Center Zone, which is a smart code zoning district. Hi, good evening. Happy to be here. Um, yes, I'm Stephanie Reynolds, and I uh, just came in. Little light right. down, please. Hi, I'm Stephanie Reynolds, um, and ha as he mentioned, I'm representing Fire Station Number Two Montgomery LLC. I'm doing business as the station at Five Points. It's the historic fire station at the Five Points roundabout near Cottage Hill, and we are requesting rezoning from a T40 zoning to T5 um, zoning that would allow us to rent the space out as an event space. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I know it doesn't, doesn't make much difference, but uh, for the record, that's not Fire Station 3, that's Fire Station, uh, I mean not Fire Station 2, it's Fire Station 3. Yes, <laughs> which is why three. we're, have, yeah, which is why we're doing business as the station at Five <clears throat> Points now instead of, but for legal purposes, our LLC is what registered as fire station number two. Uh, Madam Chairman, is this, is this amendment uh, germane to this item or is it the next item? James? I'm sorry, I don't have the amendment. I apologize. I think it's this item. It's this item. The, uh, it's this item. You're talking about the it's, item that's attached. The, this, this, it's this item. It's is just a parking plan. Or yeah, it, it, parking? yeah, it is. It is the same item. Okay. So, so there we're are two. Are we on item two or we're on item three? We're on item. We're on three. item three. Item two was withdrawn. Okay. So yeah, I got a question for you then. Uh -huh. uh, it talks about an exhibit A and a parking plan. Uh, and these little blue, this little blue square says proposed parking, but I can't see any blue, whatever it is that you're trying to tell me. Can you talk to me about the parking plan? Because Just, it said that the- Absolutely, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, is there, we did submit two parking plans. There was an original, are you guys showing, are you showing one copy or two copies? This is the attachment. Uh, it says exhibit A. Do you, do you have that? Do you have, does anyone have a copy of that? I can look at it. Your legend, you see what I mean? Your legend's yes. got this blue square right here, and I'm trying to correlate that blue square to the parking plan. Yeah, so the blue square just shows where we're planning. So all of our, our parking plan is just, it's a, it's a small event space, so our parking plan is just based on street parking. We're not going to be utilizing um, any, like, uh, parking lots or parking... Um, Oh, so the, so the blue blue lines that are shown, can you put that up? Uh, for the folks who sit on the floor, we don't have a computer. Yes. So we can, <laughs> Cruz, can you look on your computer? No. <laughs> so all I'm saying is I'm trying to correlate my parking plan to what, what it is that you're trying yes, to do. Yes, I think it's at, scroll the other direction, I think. What he's talking about should be. No, that's no. the original. Actually, no. That's the original. That's the that's original. The I don't think he has the amendment. Do you have the amended? Yeah, I don't think he has the amended one. Well, if we can even look here, I can describe it to you based on this. So our, our parking plan, and actually most of the most of the parking that we're planning on is not even would this this map focuses more on the Cottage Hill area. Our proposed parking plan is based on street parking along Clayton Street. I guess that would be the east side of Clayton Street, across from the station. So not Clayton Street and Cottage Hill. Um, the street's too narrow there. The street along Clayton Street is wider. This would be towards the EJI Memorial. Um, and then our parking plan also includes street parking along Montgomery Street. Yes, exactly there. And then north and south on Goldwaite Street. So it's all on the street parking. It is, yeah. And I think that that would be total, we're anticipating an occupant, max, maximum occupancy of 85. Um, our proposed parking plan, I think, is allows for 90 cars. 94. 
No. Is it 94? Yeah, it might yeah be I just did the math. So, so how, how are we going to control all this parking along the street in there? I mean, I know on paper it shows where you intend to park, but what's going to prevent people from parking places outside of what you're going to have a security guard present for all of our events to make sure that people and, and, and then in advance of the events that we're hosting, we're going to make sure that people who will be attending these events do have uh, are, are given guidance as to like where they should be parking for the events. And then we'll have a security guard on site to make sure that people oh, are parking oh, I understand the security guard piece, but, you know, this thing goes down one, two, three, four different streets. How is he going to police four different streets to maintain this very pretty diagram that you just presented? Right, Goldway, uh, to be honest, uh, we were also allowing for a greater, uh, I we were trying to illustrate a greater number of parking space than what we're really going to need, um, just in case any of them did get rejected. Um, so I, I think Goldway, most of our, we're going to be directing most of our parking, most of the parking um, for our events along Montgomery Street and Clayton Street. We're not going to be worrying with, with Goldway Street. And I don't, we're not going to be needing 94 parking spaces for all of our. Again, so which spaces are you going to eliminate? If you're not going to need all of them, which spaces are you going to eliminate? The ones along Goldway Street. Okay, where's Goldway Street? Goldway Street would be north and south. All right. So those little blue streaks on Goldway Street, you won't need those. So we'll amend the motion to take those 15 off. We can, yes. Okay. Any, any other ones that you want to take off before we, because you're talking about now you're down to 80 or 79 spaces, rather. Are there any that, that the council has problems with? I'm just with? asking. I mean, additional? since we got 15, I was wondering if you wanted to put any more on the table. That's all. Uh, James, how does that affect the, um, the note here on this, this amendment here? It says the Consolidated Review Committee has approved the parking plan as shown on Exhibit A. And so has traffic engineering. Um, the Planning Commission, if if, if they felt like they ne needed to, could override the CRC and reduce the number if that was what the Planning Commission wished. The, the, smart code, the SMART code allows for parking within a quarter mile radius. So it's a lot of shared parking, first come, first serve, and things like that. This was just an illustration to show the Traffic Engineering Department that, that spaces were where they were available on street parking. And we had considered using the, par the parking lot that belongs to Hilltop Arms, which is directly across from us and would really right. make the most sense for our parking, for the parking for our, for our event space. We reached out to, um, to the owners of that building to try and contact them about right. using the space, but it's my understanding that that property has recently been purchased. Um, so we haven't been able to, um, yeah, to secure that. Right. As it's yeah in transition, so this was our right. the best given like the circumstances and the timing of that. This is the best that we could come up with, and I think you know it's, again it's a small event space and right. with the smart code requirements, I think we meet. Well, I was going to say that uh, you know on street parking is usually open to the general public, and I don't know how you can restrict them if somebody comes along and wants to park there. Right. How you can stop them, but uh, it's not. James said, first come, first serve. Yeah. And as that area develops, I mean, you know, there might, parking, I think, could possibly in the future become somewhat of an issue for this area as it continues to develop. But, Ma'am, I'm for your project. I'm just curious as to how all this pretty stuff is going to get enforced. I mean, what, what arm of the city is going to enforce what we are looking at today? And what kind of events are you going to have? Well, I, let me let her answer my question first, Dick Cruz, if you don't mind, because I, I need to get an answer in terms of enforcement, because this is very pretty on here, but as you right. said, first come, first serve, and this could bleed off into somewhere else. So how is this going to be enforced is my question. Under, under smart code, Mr. Tate, there's not really going to be an enforcement. <clears throat> Someone could park, in, somebody could park on Commerce and walk up to the event center if they wanted to. So if that's the case, then what's the purpose of this? Parking? To show that the park, the surface parking was there and is available. Well, I ain't gonna fuss with you, but I'm just saying if you can park where you want to, then these blue lines don't mean anything. No, no, sir. It was just it was an indication to show that the that the sense. parking the parking is there and designated. You're right. It, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to have access to all those. 
I got it. It don't mean nothing. I got it. And we're open to alternatives. I mean, we would be happy to work with the city or other property owners in the area. There's really not an alternative. This is smart code. Yeah. It's a smart code zoning, and it's meeting the smart code requirements. The Planning Commission is welcome to reduce the numbers if they feel like that, Mr. Tate. That's your prerogative. No, sir, I don't want to reduce our parking because it doesn't mean anything. I mean, she could park anywhere. So yes, reducing sir. it doesn't mean anything. She could have another 100 cars. It yes, wouldn't mean sir. anything. So, I mean, this is fine for diagrammatic purposes, but reality, it doesn't mean anything. So, ain't no sense of reducing her parking when she can park wherever she wants to. Yes, sir. Y'all are getting nice publicity for that part of town in the last few days. Yes. Any other comments or uh, questions from the Planning Commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and properly second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed. The motion passes. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Did we have an opposition, Mr. Cook? No. No, you were you were in favor. Uh, Did the, the public I, get a chance to speak to this, though? Sir, I'm just asking. If the, was the public have an opportunity to speak? Yeah. Did yes. Okay. <clears throat> Um, Next oh, item. Okay. Pilgreen Engineering, representing Patricia Holloway Norris, request final approval of Ratchet Estates Plat Number 1B, located on the north side of North Palomino Drive, approximately 105 feet east of Soil Lane, in an Ag 1 residential agricultural zoning district. I'm Pep Pilgreen with Pilgreen Engineering. This uh, Ranchette Estates is a plat that was done probably 50 years ago when Ryan Road was way out in the country. Uh, there was a road stubbed out to the north that we have vacated. City Council has approved the vacation and we're just, there was never anything constructed where the road, road was. Uh, so we vacated the road and just platting the two adjacent lot, or the lots on either side of the uh, road into, into uh, two individual lots so that they will own to the center of the old road. Thank you. Any comments, questions, concerns from the Planning Commission? What are you doing out there now? Is that part of what you're doing here? No, there are about 10 or 12 lots along North Palomino that aren't built on. And uh, they're trying to sell the lots. They've sold a couple, got one house already completed, about to start another. But, you know, those lots have just been there. No. Uh -uh. I didn't think so, but I uh -uh. Not a thing. No, I, I used to own a property out there, and I didn't even know this street that they vacated recently it was even on there. Right. <laughs> Any other comments, questions from the Planning Commission? Any concerns, questions, comments from the audience? You wish to speak? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Move and properly second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes. The fifth item is also presented by Pilgrim Engineering, representing Buckmaster Limited. Request to rezone one lot located at 10350 Highway 80 East from Flood Hazard Zoning District to an M1 Light Industrial Zoning District. Uh, I'm Pip Pilgrim again. This item was on the agenda at the last uh, Planning Commission meeting, but I was having a little challenge with uh, COVID-19, so I forgot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that another symptom? I might have it. <laughs> If you have a symptom, be tested. Uh, anyway, Buckmasters, we actually did the plat 20, 30 years ago. It was designated as a flood hazard area. It was never changed. 
but they're looking to do some stuff and, and uh, possibly expand. Uh, and their bank wants it to, <laughs> the bankers want it to be zoned appropriately. And you know, everything around it's M1. My office is just two doors down from there. We're all zoned M1, so that's really appropriate for what's out there for them to be consistent with everybody around them. Comments, questions from the commission? Questions or any comments, concerns from the audience? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and properly second. All those in favor? Opposers have the same. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. The sixth item is presented by Jeff Coat. Engineers and Surveyors LLC, representing Wade and Debbie Osborne, request final approval of Osborne Plat Number One, located on the northwest corner of Biltmore Avenue and Cliff Road, in an R85 single-family zoning district. This is a situation where you, you come across quite often where two lots are planted into one for the simple reason that you can't build on a lot line and if you want to expand you need to combine these two lots to make a build a buildable lot so we're not creating anything more we're making less of a commotion and we'd appreciate your approval any questions comments from the audience i'm sorry from the commission has that got anything to do with that little house they got on there Yes, it does. The house was on the vacant lot, so it was an accessory structure without a main dwelling. And the easiest way to fix it was this way, because now the house will be part of the one lot. And the house is closer to the street than it needs to be as of now. But the gentleman has been told, and he's, he's going to have it moved possibly this weekend back further and uh, this will this will satisfy all the all the problems with the little house any other questions or comments from the Commission questions comments concerns from the audience is there a motion motion to approve second it's moved and properly second. All those in favor? Opposers have the same. The motion passes. Item number seven is also presented by Jeff Coat Engineering and Surveyors, representing Larry Rowley. Request rezone property containing 3.59 acres on the south side of Todd Road, approximately 1,600 feet east of Russell Lane. From R50 family, single family residential zoning to R90S. 99S Mobile Home Subdivision Zoning District. And that's what he wants to do is come home. He, he's living in Evergreen now and wants to come home and put a nice double wide out there and, and is not trying to create a park now. He's trying to make a single family dwelling on a nice little country lot. What's this notation of a private street? It's a private street. Todd Road is? No, sir. The notation should be by uh, Russell Lane. It's on the white sheet, the first sheet. Sir? Is it in the subject, Mr. Reeves? Huh? Is it in the subject? Right there, it says private street. Yes, sir. It says east of Russell Lane. No, it doesn't. Okay, it just says private street. The asterisk east next to Russell, Russell Lane, Lane is private. That's what that means. To so what now? The yep. asterisk <coughs> next to private street. Uh -huh. That is letting you know the asterisk next to Russell Lane means it's a private street. 
Oh, yeah, all those all those streets running <laughs> off of Todd are private. But, so where's the uh, street? But Todd's not. But no, so so it, it's you, not indicating you reference that Todd, to the street next to it, right? It's not indicating that Todd is private. It's indicating that Russell Lane is private. Well, where is Russell Lane? Right there. Where? Seven feet. Put put the little hand it's, on the left. It's, it's quite a it's quite a ways up on this area, Mr. Tate. It's the it, it's the only, it's the first cross street that we had as, to use as a landmark. <coughs> it's in the upper left hand corner. If you can scroll the map down just a tad, down uh, the other way, right up there. That's the first cross street we had in reference. So that's why Russell Lane and Todd Road and Russell Lane is the private street listed in the agenda. Say that again, oh, Russell oh, Lane. Oh. How is Russell Lane relative to the what's in red? It's the first, it's the first cross, it's the first designated cross street that we get to. 1,600 feet. Oh, you use it as a benchmark to locate where this property is? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. I got it. And okay. in this case, we had to indicate that it was a private street. Got it. But it's still it still should be marked and, and give somebody a point of reference. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Riley, Larry Riley, uh, he's only going to put one mobile home there and not in the future bring five or six of it. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Any other comments, questions? We need to qualify this so it's just one mobile home. No, so we don't need to qualify if the testimony would, would stand alone on, on the fact that it's being presented as one mobile home. Okay. We don't need to. And we can't we can't qualify can't we can't qualify there. any type of residential anyway, but the testimony will, will stand on its own. Can't put another one in there. <laughs> Sorry? Well, can I put another one in there? No, sir. He, he's he's Without he's coming back. He's requested to rezoning. He'd have to. Yes, sir. He'd have to come back and right. amend the zoning. So this was similar to the one we had last month. I'm sorry, Mr. Tate. I, I was sick last month. I said, well, this is similar to the one we had last month. Yes. Right. The same set of circumstances, right? Mm-hmm. In yes. terms of not being able to add any more unless they came back. Right. On right. Yes, sir. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Probably ask you again next month. That's okay, sir. Any others? from the commission. Questions, concerns from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Please come to the mic, sir. Please come to the mic and give your name and your address, please. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's cool, man. It's going your way, bro. It's going your way. I'm Larry Ryder from Evergreen, Alabama. And uh, Mr. Charles is my neighbor that stayed our land connect together. And he informed me that years ago, it already was a mobile home in the area for him to put this one at. So it ain't like I'm just moving one in. One was already sitting there years ago. I'm just gonna put another one there cause in the near future, I plan on moving to Montgomery and making my home. And that's where you're gonna live? Yes. Probably just wasn't zoned properly years ago. Yeah. Exactly. Probably wasn't zoned at all. It's a zone anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Any other comments from the audience? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Move them properly. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Opposers have the same. Motion passes. We are adjourned.